Hi, my name is Maria Kanjelska and you are watching Poland Daily Culture. We're still talking about Adam Mickiewicz examining his life when he was writing Pentadeusz, his last great epic work written and how it was presented later in film. So stay with us. We're still talking about Adam Mickiewicz since his life is fascinating. A man lived a little bit more than 50 years but could could share his experience and accomplishments with many, if not with even a nation, because we still are admiring him right now after all those years. So Mickiewicz stopped being so fruitful in writing and in publishing, and in 1838 he became a um, Latin or he started giving lectures about Latin literature in Lausanne Academy in Switzerland. And his lectures were very well received. And that's why in 1840 he was appointed for a newly made um, cathedral of Slavic literature in Collège de France. And of course, who was better in this than Mitkevich? Wow. Yeah, even right now, it's, uh, it's important, I would say it's important to have such cathedral of Slavic language, which is probably more dominated by Russian literature, especially that the Americans are in love with Russian literature. But those times, uh, Polish literature yeah, was... Americans and Russians, yeah, Americans love Russian literature because of the epic nature of it. Big country, like America. Of and, course. And big issues. The, the thing is that uh, if uh, it's the case of hegemony, it's the case of politics, because we could have 100 Mitskevich and it still uh, wouldn't be that important as Dostoevsky or Pushkin, even though. Tolstoy, don't forget him. The or king. Tolstoy. But king if, called Tolstoy. But even though, I mean, the, the literature, and especially of this time, the, the Polish literature is on the highest, highest pitch. It's the same, uh, the same thing, but uh, it just... There's less publicity because of, your, of the publicity. position of the country. But it's also important to remember, I mean, how many Nobel Prize winners have come from Poland? There's a lot now, including two in the last 25 years. Yeah, including this year we got Nobel ladies, Prize yeah, is two women. literature, which is to, to Karczuk. Yeah, and then Szymborska before that, the poet. That, yes. So you've got a, a writer, a, a novelist, and then a poet who've won the Nobel Prize, and then you have a number of other writers uh, who won the Nobel Prize. Or who should have won the Nobel Prize. Or like, who, who might have uh, easily, yeah. Like Lem, for example. Lem? But right. it's all connected to politics in a way. And of course, Mickiewicz is a great candidate for a Nobel Prize. If they'd had it, he, he, no doubt. But he was it. giving lectures in Collège de France about Polish literature. They were extremely popular. Uh, lots of people were attending them, not, the, uh, not only the enrolled students. They were even described later in newspapers. That's how, how huge influence he had, and everyone wanted to listen to them. But what Mitskevich did, he got involved into messianic uh, wave of philosophy and got captured by a man called Tovyansky. Tovyansky, I mean, he was fascinated with the, this man's uh, outlook. He was the sort of L. Ron Hubbard of his time, huh? He was a philosopher, a um, messianic philosopher. Yeah talking about Polish nation no, he as was, he a... Was talking about the need to... The Polish nation serving, a, a, a suffering for the... For the, for the world, for as the a world. Pa Polish nation, as a mm, kind of Christ of the nations. And uh, mm, suffering of the nation as something to redeem the whole the Western world, European world. culture, for, for sure. In a way, yes. Yeah, and to defend it against uh, the various... And it uh, caused a lot of problems to Mickiewicz because they, instead of talking about literature, he started talking about this philosophy. 
Well, then it but comes there was another thing about Andrzej Tobiański which caused Mickiewicz so deeply into his influence was the fact that Tobiański was uh, helping to heal Celina Szymanowska, so the wife of Mickiewicz, who became mentally ill and later died, which was very sad for Mickiewicz. After all those kids. After all those kids. And Mickiewicz himself had a... So he's left with the kids. He was left with the kids and he had a suicidal attempt. Six kids will do that to you. I don't think it might be the case of also being an immigrant in Paris, not I, having they money. They probably didn't have that kind of humor back then, but uh, I wonder, if, if you said that to Mitzkevich, I wonder how he'd react. I wonder if he was a man of, with a sense of humor, because we tend to look at people and, and put them on a pedestal, these, especially the older ones, and think, well, they weren't, they weren't like us. But obviously, he's just a man. He's a very gifted man, but we know other writers and artists today. I guess Mitkevich has lots of sense of humor and yeah, I he think had, so. he he had uh, also a lot of distance to himself. It came so easily to him to rhyme things, to come to a party and to rhyme about the beauty of a woman or the political situation. That's why he was the envy of all, uh, because he could do it. No one else, like Swavatsky, was not so capable of such things. He was preparing himself. There's a famous duel when Swavatsky was writing down all this interpretation and he presented it in front of Mitskevich and Mitskevich kind of ridiculed him by just putting putting other verses together. Everything in rhyme. It was like he was the Kanye West. Might be the case. Of his time. I mean it's <laughs> a joke, but rappers are famous for being able to they're the only people who can get away with poetry now. I mean, poetry is just not accepted and the, the way it was then. So if you went into a place and started rhyming everything, people would think that was clever. If you did it today, people would be going, uh, hmm. So we could say that Mitskevich was a rapper of his time, or he, he would be a rapper today. I wonder if he'd like today. Nie pytają cię o imię, walczą z ostrym cieniem mgły. To jest maj, nie pachnie saska kępa, może ktoś to gdzieś przewidział, ale wróć wara... He wouldn't understand. Uh, it'd be a shock, wouldn't it? It'd he would be, be a little bit in shock, yes. Yeah. But back just to, let's finish that part of messianic romance of Mickiewicz. So he was... Um, he was unfortunately also criticized by the church and some of his publications, like I would say religious and philosophical publications done about Tovianski or with Tovianski were subversive. prohibited books. Sub subversive books. intellectual romance with Tovianski lasted until 1846, when, when Mitkevich criticized Tovianski for his passivity and returned back to a traditional, a traditional Catholic church. And um, He was being too passive uh, with regard to Poland regaining its freedom, I suppose. That yes, was that it, was wasn't it? And it's worth remembering the slogan of this time, which is very famous. Uh, perhaps you were going to come to that, may I say it anyway? Say it. Uh, for your freedom and ours, which uh, became uh, a slogan uh, associated with Mitskiewicz and uh, played throughout Polish history up until, uh, up until World War II, really. We will not get deeper into messianic philosophy of Mitskiewicz and Tovianski, but it is extremely interesting. And this element of Polish nation as a Christ of nations is deeply rooted also later to the Polish culture. And we cannot, we definitely cannot deny it. So thank you very much for watching Poland Daily Culture. And I hope it is interesting for you. Very interesting.